Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about the rims that I have on my E90. These are ESRs, 19 inch rims. The rims are sitting on, or should I say wearing, 25530 ZR19s all around. It's more like a square setup. And uh, I have ST callovers awesome callovers obviously you have to have callovers to have this setup because the car originally comes with an 18 inch rim and uh, run flat tires but I don't have run flat tires on this car I have a tires called Lexeni they're supposed to be like a I would say a good cost tire not too expensive because there's no way I'm spending two thousand dollars on the tire or a thousand something dollars on one tire no way are 19 inch like I said before and they're 10 and a half in the front and 10 and a half in the rear now if I was to do this setup again I would not get a 10 and a half in the front for sure I would have gotten either a nine and a half in the front or a nine in the front or eight and a half because the fitment on this car right here is just about right I can only get my fingers through but in order to get this fitment to fit the way it did, it took some serious time. And it's the same thing in the rear. I could only get my fingers and a little bit of my hand through. When you look at it from the front, you can see the poke on both sides because the tires are straight, the steering wheel is straight. You could see how aggressive it makes the car look. It's just an aggressive look because this is such an aggressive setup. But if I be honest with you, if I had to do it again, I would go with a nine and a half, not the 10 and a half. I would definitely go nine and a half, not 10 and a half, or at least a nine, just to be safe, just to have the the tires poke in. Now I'm already cambered. I'm cambered in. And I'm not fully cambered in, but I think I could cam come in again, come in a little bit more. Because of the size of the rim, the tires poke out. Let me pull the hood up a little bit so you guys can see. Now, just to show you guys how much camber that I had. You can barely see it from there. Okay, here we go. I could go in about maybe a little bit more, about half an inch or so. So all I would need to do is take this off, unscrew these, loosen these up, and then push the whole suspension over a little bit and then it should be able to tuck in even more. Let me jack up the vehicle so I can show you guys what the coilovers look like. All right, the old faithful DeWalt gun. Let's take these off. As you can see, there is no spaces needed. I don't have any spaces rear or front. No spaces, and these are the ST callovers. As you could see, in the beginning, I had a little rub here, but I took care of that. Um, the thing I like about the ST callovers is a direct fit. 
Um, they're made in Germany. Uh, also, they're made for BMW. I like the fact that uh, they have a very simple me um, bracket here in order to raise the vehicle. There is a island keyhole that is right here. You need a small Allen key in order to loosen that, and then you have a you have a, a small coil over wrench in order to move this up or to move this down. As you can see, they have a bracket for everything to fit properly for the brake line, for the speed sensor, for your uh, your brake sensor. Everything fits properly in the coilovers. No modification needed. Uh, they have a double type spring setup technology that I'm not too sure about, so I won't really comment much on it. But I have to say it keeps the suspension very smooth. Right now, the entire suspension is on exactly the way in terms of the hard and soft is exactly the way the manufacturer sent it the coilovers fit directly into the hub and you connect it with the three bolts on top um it's a direct fit that's one thing i love about the se coilovers direct fit no, no modification again needed i left the suspension according to the setup of the original original manufacturer of XT because when they send you the coilovers they are going to be considered OEM setup meaning they're gonna have the same softness and action as the OEM setup which is what I like but if you wanted to harden it or soften the setup there is a hole I don't know if you could see right here that you have to put a key in and you turn it to the left or to the right you have, there's uh, numbers on the key and the numbers tell you if you're going up high, which is, I believe is harder. And if you're going the opposite, which is to the right, I believe it's softer. Now let's go to the rear. One mishap that I had is maybe I should have ordered the extenders because I can't make it harder soft unless I remove these carpets out the way. And I don't feel like doing that every day. Overall, this front tire is a very big tire, right? I'll show you how big it is. Let's put it up front, let's stand it up. Anyone that's familiar with a D-Walk gun, look how big this tire is. It's 10 and a half wide. This is ridiculous. This, this should be something that you put in the rear, <laughs> not in the front. This is what they consider a stage one stretch. I did, I did not originally want a stage one stretch, but somehow I ended up with a stage one stretch because I couldn't return the rims at the time. But this is a bit of beautiful rim. The RF1 is a very beautiful rim. I don't even think they make these anymore from what I heard from fitness industry. They were so much on back order when I had them and I purchased them and I wanted to trade the front ones again for the nine and a half or at least a nine, they didn't have them. So if anybody knows anyone with a nine or a nine and a half in these, let me know. One thing I definitely love about the wheel setup is how the car looks from the rear. Also, these wheels weigh 20 pounds compared to the wheels I originally had in my stock BMW, which those weigh 30 pounds. So I saved 10 pounds weight on each corner. I want to take you guys on a little trip with me so you could see, because you can't feel, how the suspension is and the wheel set up. To be honest with you, it's pretty smooth. Even when you hit bumps, you don't really bounce around or anything of like that nature. Turning smooth. Everything is very smooth. The car is very planted. That's for sure, the car is very planted. very well everything is very smooth
Everything stays smooth, stays planted. suspension setup work yes but is it ideal for everyone I have to say no it's not ideal for everyone I would say again if you want a setup and for something similar to this go with nine and a half for the front nines or eight and a half you could go ten and a half in the rear or ten in the rear but this is not ideal for everyone. You are going to go through a little bit of a headache trying to have the suspension fit everything correctly. The tires are tucked in, the no rubbing, and to have a, the look that you're looking for in the vehicle, but still have good ride quality. I believe that I myself, I kind of looked at a little bit. I have good ride quality. At times, I don't really rub because I put the suspension in the way that, you know, I don't get rubbing on any size unless like it's something very like a serious bump or something like that. Or I'm coming out of a driveway, I might get a little bit of a scrape, but nothing major. Nothing to make you, you know, rattle. But again, I would not say this is an ideal setup, but it definitely makes a car look great. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Please share the videos. All right, and comment whatever you like. And uh, I will answer you back as soon as I can. Okay? She's awake all the time. What are you trying to find? I hope this ain't a lie.